let's do my hair how it was if it's been left for long enough oh no i think it's still damp i cannot do hair to save my life but this is how i was wearing it in the pictures that i posted on instagram so i was trying to recreate it but this genuinely just took me three attempts i will not be doing my own hair for my wedding day <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back. So I have some news. <laughs> if you haven't already seen on my Instagram, on my TikTok, on Twitter, I even posted on YouTube Shorts, the actual proposal. So if you wanna go see that, it is on Shorts. Me and James got engaged on holiday a couple weeks ago. The actual date that it was, was the 13th of September. We were then on holiday for two weeks and we didn't actually post it until we got back just because we like wanted to to keep it to ourselves for a couple of weeks, you know, just like have it to ourselves and our family and enjoy our holiday. And then when we get back, we posted it on social media. And today I'm gonna sit down and do my makeup. I'm actually gonna try and recreate the makeup that I did in the pictures that I posted um, for our little engagement photo shoot that we just took down on the beach. So I'm gonna try and recreate that makeup while I answer some of your questions about the proposal and everything to do with, well, everything to do with that, I guess. Everyone has been so kind and so lovely and so sweet. And I just wanna say a massive, massive thank you. I know I mentioned in my last video, at the end of that video. Just a big thank you to everyone, but just in case you hadn't seen that, I wanna say thank you again because everyone has been so kind and we were so overwhelmed on the day that we posted it because there were just so many nice messages and comments. And so if you were one of those people, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we were feeling very loved and it's just been such a nice time. Yeah, it's mad because a lot of the people watching, well, not a lot, but I'm assuming some of you watching have been with me since the beginning of my channel. I started my channel when I was 18, I'm now 20, I'm now engaged, I'm getting married. That just blows my mind a bit because it's kind of like the people that have been watching me have kind of grown up with me on YouTube and I feel like I've grown up a lot on YouTube even though I was technically an adult when I started, I literally felt like a child. Anyway, let's get into the makeup. And for this video, I thought I would actually put on a top that is not a t-shirt or a hoodie just to don't know, feel a bit more wedding-y, I guess. For primer, I'm using the e.l.f. Power Grip and for my foundation, I'm using the L'Oreal BB Cover Age Perfect in Light Beige 02, where all the writing is coming off. And I think this has been discontinued and I absolutely love this stuff, so I'm very sad about that. But the L'Oreal like tinted serum drops in the glass tube are kind of pretty much the same kind of thing, so it's all right. So the first thing is a lot of people just saying, tell us the story, like how did it happen? It was our first night on holiday. We were in Skiathos, which is an island in Greece where um, me and James have been going for, this is now the the third year in the row, the third year in a row that we have been there together. James has been there like seven times, I think. His parents actually had their honeymoon there. He's been there with his family before. And yeah, he showed me this island. I absolutely fell in love with it. And we've been back three years in a row. So, so our flight that day was at six o'clock in the morning and we had to leave the house at 3.30 in the morning. My dad, bless my dad, um, he's an absolute legend. He offered to drive us to the airport. So he was picking us up at 3.30 in the morning. I didn't get into bed until 2.30 a.m. because I was trying to get like work stuff finished off the day before and then I had to pack and I didn't start packing until 10 p.m. And for some reason it took me four and a half hours to pack my stuff. I was just drifting off to sleep and then James's alarm went off at 3 a.m. So I hadn't slept. <laughs> I slept for about two hours on the flight, which is pretty good. And then we got there and we kind of unpacked our stuff. I think we chilled by the pool for a little bit. Then we had a nap for maybe like an hour Hour and I'd only put on a tiny bit of makeup. I think literally on the plane or when we got to the hotel, I can't even remember. I just put on a little bit. We had this nap. I slept in my makeup, slept in my contact lenses, woke up, couldn't find my hairbrush. I didn't brush my hair. So this leads me on to my next question, which is, did you suspect anything? Were you expecting it? Like, did I know that it was gonna happen? So I had a feeling that it might be happening on this trip. I was pretty sure that it was gonna be happening on this trip and I'll explain why in a minute. But I did not think that he was gonna do it on the first day. So kind of yes and kind of no. I really didn't think that it was gonna happen on the first day because we were so sleep deprived. James was also sleep deprived. Like he'd only had, I don't know, maybe like four hours sleep the night before. And we just planned to go down to watch the sunset, which we do every single time we go to Skiathos on our first night, we go to the little local beach, we watch the sunset or we'll do a sunset swim. And originally we were gonna swim, but then we were both kind of like, oh, we're kind of tired. Should we just go and watch the sunset and then go for dinner? So that was always the plan. I was thinking like, if he's gonna propose on this trip, I really don't think it's gonna be now. Like I didn't think it was gonna be on that day at all. But just to kind of double check, 
I said to James, I was like, oh, so like, you know, we're just going to the beach, right? What kind of thing should I wear? Because I'd actually brought with me on the trip like a few nice dresses, thinking that when it was gonna happen, I thought that I would know exactly when it was gonna happen because I just thought that James would give it away somehow. <laughs> so I said to James, I was like, oh, what should I wear? And he was like, oh, we're just going for dinner. Like just wear something really casual. He was like, why don't you wear what you wore the other day? Which was a white tennis skirt and this black and white floral crop top. And then I just shoved on a white lid in shirt over the top of it. He was like, yeah, that looks really nice. Like that's absolutely fine. Just wear that. So I was like, okay, judging by one, how chilled James is and two, how he's just said, oh, wear something super casual. We're just going for dinner. I was like, nah, it's not happening today. I can chill. Didn't brush my hair because I couldn't find my hairbrush. Didn't touch up my makeup. I hadn't even done my eyebrows. They just had a bit of brow gel through them. But like, cause I shave off the ends of my eyebrows, <laughs> they stop here. I didn't put any lipstick on. I'd slept in my minimal makeup and we went down to the beach. As we were walking down to the beach, I suddenly kind of thought, oh my God, wait, is it happening now? I could see James like fiddling with his shorts and like his pockets. And I was looking in his pockets like, is there a ring box in that pocket? Which I couldn't see one, but I was thinking, why is he like playing with his pockets? He literally told me afterwards that that had nothing to do with the ring. He knew where the ring was. It was in his wallet. And he was like, he was fully sure of that. He wasn't even fiddling to find the ring. He just said that he had an itchy leg. But because I suddenly thought, oh my God, wait, why is James like playing with his pockets or whatever? Why is he touching his leg? I then thought, oh crap, is it happening now? <laughs> so then we were just watching the sunset and like listening to the waves and being like, oh, it's so pretty. Like, it's so nice to be back. It's so beautiful. Like, I'm so excited for this holiday. And in my head, I was kind of thinking like, is it gonna happen now? Nah, surely it's not gonna happen now. Like, no, nah, I don't think he's gonna do it today. But then also part of me was nervous. Like, oh my God, what if it is gonna happen now? Like, what if this is the time? <laughs> and so then I walk over to the waterfront and I was like, oh, should we go and, should we just like dip our feet in if we're not gonna swim? And he was like, oh yeah, let's do that. So I walk down to the waterfront. James, what I think he's doing is behind me taking his shoes and socks off. I'd already walked down to the waterfront. I'd taken off my shoes, which if you watch the video, you can see that I've taken off my shoes and I'm literally just about to step my toe into the sea and then I hear James go, Soph. And then the second I heard him say that, the way that he said it was very sort of like serious. The second that I heard him say that, I turned around and I was like, I was like, oh shit, it's happening now. But I just really didn't think it was gonna happen then because I thought he would be way more nervous. I thought he would have like given it away somehow because of everything that sort of led up to this. And so I was genuinely so shocked because I was like, oh my God, wait. I was not expecting it in that moment. And I think I was like pretty caught off guard. So. It was actually so nice that it ended up being a surprise in that way. Cause even though I'd expected it on the holiday, like in that moment, I did not expect it. So I was like, what? And then he said some very lovely words and he got down on one knee and I immediately burst into tears. By the way, um, I just used the Bondi Bell stick from Nude Sticks. Rare Beauty Joy. It was like an instant reaction if I just started hysterically crying. And some people commented on the video being like, um, oh, I'd love to see what you were laughing about in the video. I wasn't laughing. I was literally like hysterically crying. Well, I think, and also laughing, it was kind of like a laugh cry of being like, oh my God. And I just kept saying to him like, are you serious? You can ever so slightly hear the sound in the video without music. However, I thought I'm not gonna post that because that's maybe like a little bit too personal to post on the internet, like exactly what was said in those moments but um but we did send that to our friends and family and I just did a lot of saying like are you serious and I think straight away I was like yes of course I will and honestly in that moment I felt like I was in some kind of like weird dream state and I literally said to him I was like is this real because it just felt so surreal and like such a yeah it felt like I was in a dream like it was so it was like an out of body experience <laughs> maybe because I was so tired as well but like yeah it was just it was crazy and it was so lovely. It was such a lovely moment. James was obviously there on one knee with the ring and I will explain. God, all of these questions kind of run into one. One of the questions was how long had he been planning it and was he nervous? James, do you wanna come here? Hello. A couple of people have asked. One, how long were you planning it for? Oh God. Um. So I've been planning it for since around March. March, that's when I started thinking. That's what thinking. your mum said to me actually. She was like, I've yeah. known since March. And I was like, March? Yeah, around about March. It's, it's quite weird, though. I don't think they can see it. Um, <laughs> then started getting it really in motion around about June. Yeah, about June when I started contacting uh, Amy, the jeweler, <laughs> who um, made the ring. <laughs> and then in July, I had a appointment with 
with Amy. Yeah, she's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> it made it a lot more like sort of personal because Soph has probably mentioned that she's got another ring made by Amy. I've not actually got to that part in the story Amy. yet. I've literally just told like the first part of the story, but I will uh, go into all of that. And also, sorry about the sort of blonde frosted tips. <laughs> um, I dyed my hair for charity and it was all blonde. So, um, you don't need to apologize. Oh, there's a delivery yeah. man here. The second thing that people want to know mm -hmm. is were you nervous? I was nervous going at, like sort of for the appointment of the ring. Yeah. Mm. And then up until sort of like, like just before. Yeah, a little bit. It was more, I was more nervous like having the chat with Soph, to be honest. Me? Yeah. Like, you know, when I was just like, oh yeah, I could tell you nervous in that moment. Yeah. In when that you moment. said, I, I just said before, I was like, when I heard you say my name, because you were like, Soph, you said it in such a serious way that I was like, oh, it's happening now. Yeah. <laughs> I said it in quite a serious way and I was quite nervous. God, I, I recorded it all. You didn't, you didn't actually know that it was all set up. Yes, which is crazy. oh my gosh, I forgot to say. So one of the other questions, which I think I was going to get to later, somebody said, did I film it or did James film it? I did not film it. I had no idea that he was filming it. Mm -hmm. So when I'd gone to the like seafront and taken off my shoes, James was behind me taking off his shoes. But little did I know in that moment, you had taken off your shoe, balanced it on a sunbed, put your phone in your shoe, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then pressed record, and I guess because I was stood there, did you sort of like line it up? Because that's where I was stood. Like, you... uh, I'm not actually gonna like, lie. I saw, I saw a wing that bit. <laughs> I was just hoping it was in shot. Imagine it wasn't. <laughs> I think that was just a bit pure luck, really. Mm with that and being able to get like such a good video with um it with the background and everything which it was video. yeah it was lovely and it, it was just you yeah so it was so well. i was thinking of not really actually recording it but mm. then i wanted i wanted something for like a keepsake of that moment as well and i know for a fact that my my parents would have been like oh have you got a video or something oh. like that it was more for like memories and everything for for my for my end really and i know mm. for a fact that you love you love a video and love a memory so i was just like I oh, well, it'll be it'll be nice for the both of us and it's it's about like the whole thing's like a two minute video and it's mm. just two minutes that we can just replay over and over again which is yeah which incredible. i love because i feel like in that moment after it happened i kind of couldn't because i was so like in shock and you were probably so nervous i can't really remember like I couldn't really remember it. And then when I watched back the video, I was like, actually, oh, I'm so glad that you recorded that because then it's a memory, like you say, that we can keep forever, mm, exactly. which is really sweet. Because exactly. originally I was kind of not necessarily bothered if it was filmed or if it was just like a moment for us. It really didn't matter to me. But then obviously since you filmed it, I was thinking like, oh, it's like, I'm actually so glad yeah, that you it's did. A nice, it's a nice, um, And then I just kept watching nice it back for the whole holiday and just yeah. crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back to it, I wasn't really nervous up until that point. Yeah, I did it on the first night because it's gonna sound like weird. I just wanted to get it out of the way, which sounds so bad of me. No, I get. No, it doesn't. I fully get that. I don't like faffing about. Like I hate. <laughs> I hate like sort of the thing where it's just like I've got it. It's just like I, I need to sort of do it. We got there. Weather was nice. Went down for a sunset and it was just like, well, I may as well just do it. You did a great job. Oh, thank you. I just set my face with the Laura Mercier translucent powder. And then for my eyebrows, I think on the day I used these. Can't fully remember, but the Maybelline Express Brow and the Ultra Slim Brow Pencil. Or maybe I used the other one. As in on the day that we took the pictures, not the um, proposal day. Because a few days later, we went down and took some like engagement pictures. Yeah, because on the first... Um... First night, we didn't really have time. Yeah, because the sun was setting. We then immediately FaceTimed my family and FaceTimed James's family. And then we had to go to dinner because it was getting later and later. Also, um, also, we were up at like... Yeah. Like three o'clock in the morning. So yeah, it's literally. Like we, were, we were tired. So, and also with the engagement, I wanted it to be as natural as possible. Like, I'll come, I'll come sit down. Like with the, with the engagement, like I'm not all about like being all fancy and like just Neither am I, proper really. dressing up and like for it, because then it just, it makes you even more nervous. I wanted it to be mm. like as natural as possible. And to be fair, I did it in quite a quiet place. I didn't want really people around. Yeah, neither did I. Like, just felt a lot more chilled and it felt like that we had the, like we were at the beach and it felt like we were just us two. I wanted it to be a personal sort of moment. Wanted to be as natural as possible. So we were just like, t-shirt, shorts and mm -hmm. yeah, tired. That, and that's what James stuff. said about like when I'd asked him to pick my outfit, he said that he picked something super casual because he wanted it to be super casual. And actually like looking back on the whole moment, I and what you said about not wanting it to be like a big dress thing. I'm so glad that you did it that way because then mm -hmm. like you say it was just very us and so chilled and yeah it was just it was, yeah it was just perfect I think yeah it was just nice and chilled you didn't seem nervous no just like when you were getting ready I was just like actually no when I when you were getting ready I was a little bit nervous because uh <laughs> I didn't I couldn't find the box <laughs> Amy the jeweler pretty much said right so I'm gonna give you a little a little plastic bag to put the ring in and I was like 
okay, why? And she goes, oh, you're gonna put it in your wallet because if you go through security and your bag goes off for any reason and you've got the ring in there and it's in the box, they're gonna get it, get it out, open up the box, see the ring, your partner's gonna be next to you. It just ruins it. And she said she's had some proposals where people have had to propose in the airport, that's which is so like shit. in front of like everyone as well. And it's just like, oh, it just ruins everything. Yeah, that sucks. So she gave me a little baggie, put it into my wallet. So I had the wallet through the whole flight. No, I took it out when we got to the apartment, but put it in the drawer. I totally forgot where I put the box. And then I was just like searching around trying to find the box because I actually hid it in some shorts. So I was just like rummaging around while Soph was like getting ready <laughs> for a shower or something. And then when I heard the shower turn off, I just jumped back onto the bed. I was like, right, I just got to make do. So I put the, <laughs> the bag and the ring back in my wallet. I have the box, right? It's it's a pretty chunky box. Oh, oh God. Is that the baggie? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it has one of these ring adjuster things in it. This is the box, but how would you have hidden this box? It's quite chunky, you know? I, yeah, was, like, I, I would, would have seen that in your shorts. Thank you for your... It's all right. Thank you for your participation. It's okay. I just realized as well, I haven't I haven't even shown you the ring. It is a gold band with an oval diamond and then like little diamonds that go half the way around it. Um, I've got a little ring adjuster thing on it at the moment because it, it is, I think half a size too big or maybe a size too big so it just needs to get adjusted which we're doing soon but um but yeah this is the ring the bronzer that i actually used was the beauty bay one and then i dropped it off our hotel balcony and it shattered into a million pieces so i'm just going to use this laura mercier one laura mercier laura mercier one is what i meant to say so coming back to the question of did i expect it i posted on my story the other day that um it was like a little shot of my ring and from amy who's the jeweler who made the ring i said that a few months ago i think it was back in August, I had seen that Amy had posted a ring, this ring on her story. And it was a post about like how yellow gold is coming back into fashion or something like that. And I screenshot that and I sent it to Ellie and I said to her, I, something along the lines of, I might be delusional, but I think this ring could be for me. And I then posted this on my story the other day and it turns out that that was my ring and I was right. And a lot of people were asking, how did I know that? So basically back in July, James said to me one day randomly, he was like, oh, by the way, I've got a meeting um, on Saturday in London. And I was like, like, when do you ever have a meeting in London? Like, James never has meetings, full stop. So I was thinking, right, okay, you've got a meeting in London. And in that moment, my head kind of was like, oh my God, I think this is to do with what I think it's about. So I tried to give him an out and was like, oh, is this for your meeting with Calm? Because I knew that he was working with a charity that he's been working with on stream. And he had some kind of like event with them at some point. And so I was like, oh, is this when you're doing your thing with Calm? And he said, yeah. And then uh, something else afterwards. <laughs> And I was like, would you mean something else? And then he ended up having to cancel that meeting because I was like, James, we've got a wedding on that day. Like one of my school friends was getting married. You can't go to that meeting. And then he was like, oh shit. And he was like, oh, I'll get it sorted. I'll get it sorted. Then a few days later, we were out on a walk with Pinks and I was walking up ahead and James was on the phone to his mum. And I could hear him say, oh yeah, no, it's fine. She's up ahead. She can't hear. What James should know is that in the nearly five years that we've been together, I can hear everything. There are some times where I can't hear things if you're speaking directly to me, but if you're far away from me and I'm trying to like listen to something. I can hear small sounds and I will probably hear what you're saying. And then I heard him go, yeah, 15th of July. So then I thought he's gonna tell me his meeting's been moved to the 15th of July. And lo and behold, a few days later, oh yeah, so I've got a meeting on the 15th of July in London. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, what for? And he was like, oh, I've just got some stuff to sort out. And that was it. And I didn't ask any more questions. I was like, okay, that tells me everything I need to know. I'm not gonna ask anything else. Some stuff to sort out. Um, He could have told me that he was meeting a friend. He could have told me he was going to watch a football match. He could have told me he was getting his hair done. He literally could have told me anything and I would have believed him and when I questioned him on this afterwards I was like well, why didn't you just make up an excuse he was like I don't want to lie to you because then you'd be annoyed at me for lying I was like James this is the one time where you're allowed to lie and that just made me laugh so much and then when it came to that day I was just kind of like oh well have a good day like enjoy and I think I even said to him the day before I was like oh so what are you up to tomorrow maybe thinking that by then he would have come up with an excuse but he was like oh I've just got a few things to sort out and he was like I'm just gonna like have a little solo day around London and I was like, okay. <laughs> so then he went and then <laughs> I was just at home all day, losing my mind thinking like he's definitely either going to an appointment about 
an engagement ring. He's either going to collect an engagement ring or he's going to like design an engagement ring or something to do with an engagement ring. I'm just using this little NYX blush palette, the Barbie one. But I was thinking, when he comes home, I am not gonna be able to ask him what he got up to while keeping a straight face. So I messaged him before he got home being like, oh, so what have you been up to today? And he replied to me, just taking in the sights. That was all he could think of to say. And then he got home and was like, oh yeah, I just had a nice, like, you know, just like a touristy day around London. And then the next day he had a phone call with his mum. And after the phone call with his mum, he came down and was like, oh yeah, so yesterday that uh, thing in London was I had to go and sort something for my parents' anniversary. And I was like, okay. And you've, you've uh, just decided to tell me this 24 hours after you've been in London. <laughs> and I was thinking in that moment, his mum has definitely just said to him, James, what did you tell her? And he said, well, I didn't tell her anything. And she's probably said, well, that's going to be suspicious. Tell her you were doing something for our anniversary. But by that point, it was too late and I had already sussed it out. <laughs> so that is how I knew that it was coming at some point. And I was 95% sure that it was going to be on this trip because we don't have any holidays booked. <laughs> but after this trip, um, and I knew that he would probably do it abroad. So yeah, that's how I knew that it was coming. And oh my God, I forgot to say, oh, this is the little banner that James's mum put up for us when we got back from holiday, which I forgot to mention. But it turned out on that day, that I was suspicious and he had this meeting in London. That was when he was going to design the ring and pick out the diamond and everything. And he actually went with our friend Sophie Foster because the night before we were talking and playing Fortnite and she was like, oh, so what are you up to in London tomorrow, James? She had no idea. And I was just sat there like, oh my God, what's he gonna say? And he just sort of stuttered and was like, uh, uh, and didn't say anything. And then he messaged her like, I'm going to like, pick out a ring for Soph. And then he was like, do you want to come with me? Because he was really nervous. And so then, yeah, obviously he went to the appointment and they went out for lunch. So um, yeah, that was what he was up to on that day. But then because like of all of that, it was then so lovely how I didn't expect it on the first day. So it was still like, I knew it was coming, but it was a surprise on the day. And it was still, yeah, it still caught me off guard. So I think it worked out just fine. And in terms of how did I know that that was my ring, a lot of people said, did you pick the ring together? Did you try on rings? Had you discussed ring styles? I mean, me and James have discussed ma discussed marriage for pretty much like six months into our relationship. We spoke about one day getting married and then obviously like since we've moved in together, like we've discussed it a lot. We both knew that we wanted to get married. And I think it might have been around the time that my brother got engaged actually. James just asked me, so I get it right when the time comes, please can you send me like, what you would like in a ring. Cause he was like, I don't want to get it wrong. I want to get you something that you like. And he said, can you just send me the details so that I don't forget them? So I sent him over screenshots, but there was maybe like five or six different ring styles that were all quite similar. I knew that I wanted it to be yellow gold. I knew that I wanted an oval shaped diamond. I wasn't a hundred percent sure on my ring size, which is why it is slightly too big. Amy said that it's probably better to go half a size too big than half a size too small, because especially when you're on holiday in a hot country, your fingers can swell. She said, let's go a little bit bigger and then you can always get it resized because I wasn't 100% sure on my ring size. Because weirdly, I'd had rings that were size I that fit my finger. But then later on, I tried on my brother's ring, which is size H and that fit me. And I was like, crap, I think I now need an H. And because Amy had actually made me this ring, I worked on a collaboration with her, this uh, one in the middle here. I think it was four years ago now, back when I still lived with my parents. And so I knew that she knew what she was talking about when it came to engagement and wedding rings. So I'd said to James, like, I'd recommend going to her. And he was like, oh yeah, for sure. Like I will be going to Amy when the time comes. So I knew that who the jeweler was. I knew the kinds of designs that I had sent to James and then he could pick which one he preferred. And also like, depending on like his budget and everything, I didn't know which one would be the most cost effective and which one he would prefer. So I was like, here are some ones that I like. You can pick from those. And then he kind of could do the rest. So then when I was suspicious anyway, and I saw Amy post a, yellow gold ring saying that yellow gold is back in fashion and it had an oval diamond on it I was like I think that that could be my ring and I ended up being right and that is how I knew so I didn't have some psychic intuition it's because I was already like sure of what I wanted and sure that James had something planning in the works with all of his suspicious behavior so that's how I knew James was joking saying that I'd drawn up a pdf I gave him my ring size which I said h or i I said yellow gold I said oval center diamond but I said I don't want it to be too big because I also don't want you to go broke buying me an engagement ring. I said, I ideally want it so that I can fit a 
flat wedding band next to it because some rings, you know, if this bit's a bit too low down, you then can't fit a flat wedding band next to it. And you can get some beautiful like curved ones and some custom made ones, but just from my personal preference of like pictures of rings and wedding bands that I looked at, I wanted it to be like, flat against the band if that makes sense and then I sent him a few different pictures I'm just gonna put a bit of this on which is the Becca highlighter in the shade Moonstone the little mini travel one because that's what I bought with me another one of the questions is how long were we to have we been together how long were we together for before he proposed I think it's four years and nine months that we've been together so in December it will be our five-year anniversary and at the end of October it's five years since our first date but officially since James asked me to be his girlfriend it will be five years in December so coming up five years but we've lived together for the past three years like I said we've spoken um, quite a lot about getting married and how we like we both want to get married I actually think like on one of our first dates maybe it was like our third date maybe even our I think it was our second date I we had the conversation about like how do you feel about marriage how do you feel about kids which might sound intense to some people but if I'm gonna be with somebody there's no point us being together for like a few years and then figuring out that they don't want kids or they don't want to get married because those are things that are important to me I'm just taking some of that bronzer through my crease so the next question is was the holiday already planned or did, did James do it for this reason and did your parents know and is that why they were there were they at the proposal so my parents came and joined us for the second week but no the holiday was already planned we had already planned for my parents to come out anyway we'd spoken about that for a while and we didn't intentionally well I mean obviously not me but James didn't intentionally invite my parents because he knew that he was going to propose on this trip I think he wasn't even fully certain at the time last year when we booked it um it was just a nice coincidence but I think he then thought because my parents were coming out anyway that it might be quite nice timing to do it so I'm sure that that sort of linked into it and did my parents know so my dad knew um um, and a lot of people have said like did James ask for your parents permission so my dad has always said he's always been very kind of non-traditional and that he's like I don't own you like you don't need to ask for my permission like it's entirely up to you if you want to get married or not my parents have always kind of been like you know you do your thing and we'll support you and my dad's always been like it's very much your life like I'm not the owner of you if you get what I mean but then James also did want to be traditional in asking for blessing I guess to propose to me and so apparently it was on my brother's birthday we were all around my parents house and my dad and James went out into the garden because they were both like really tired and um, they wanted to go get some fresh air, which I mean, I didn't even think was that weird at the time. And then yeah, apparently that's when James said to my dad, he was like, I've got something to ask you. And my dad was like, okay. And he said, I'm thinking of proposing to Soph when we're in Skiathos. And he was like, I know that you said that I don't need to ask for your permission and that you don't own Soph. But he was like, I wanted to just see if I had your blessing. And I think my dad was like, yeah, absolutely. And then James showed him a picture of the ring. And apparently my dad was like proper tearing up and getting emotional. My dad knew. But he kept it a secret from my mum and James's parents knew as well. But obviously, yeah, my mum, my mum didn't know. And none of the rest of my family knew. And then straight away we FaceTimed my parents and I'm literally on the beach and I'm like this. And for a good 10 seconds, my mum was just there like, hello. She didn't say anything. And then suddenly she was like, oh. And then it was, yeah, it was really nice. My brother joined, my dad joined and we all had a little, a little chat. I think I've gone a bit overboard with my nose contour, haven't I? Which funnily enough, I did that on the day. I accidentally went a bit overboard with my nose contour. <laughs> and I'm using this little gold highlighter shade on my eyes because I had fully intended to bring an eyeshadow palette with me on holiday, just like a little one, but I completely forgot. So I just used this as, as a eyeshadow which actually worked pretty well. Oh, and then apparently on the morning when my dad came to pick us up to go to the airport, I was like faffing about getting my stuff ready and James was obviously waiting with my dad and apparently he opened up his wallet, showed my dad that he got the ring, my dad gave him the thumbs up and I was completely none the wiser. A few other people asked about like, how did he get you wearing white? Uh, did you intend to wear white or was it just a coincidence? So on the actual day of the proposal, I was wearing a white skirt and a white shirt and then the black and white um, top, which obviously I had asked James what I should wear and that's what he picked out for me, but that was just kind of like an, a complete accident. And that's obviously the outfit that I'm wearing in the video. And then there's the pictures um, that I posted on Instagram. A couple days later, we went down to the beach and took some like engagement photos because yeah, I think we explained earlier, like we were really rushed on the actual day of the proposal and I had not done my makeup properly. And like, it was such a nice moment. And we were then gonna go for dinner and everything and FaceTime with our family. And we didn't do like a photo shoot or anything on that day. So I just thought like a few days later, it would be nice to go and get some actual, like I guess like our own little engagement photo shoot that we just took my phone down to the beach and a little tripod and took them ourselves. I'm using this Maybelline, literally all the writings come off the tattoo liner in smoky brown. I think this is 
is called. Someone has said, were you happy with the nails that you had done at the time? Um, and what I found kind of funny actually is that a couple of James's mates were like, oh, and he made sure you had your nails done. It's like, no, he did not make sure I had my nails done. I made sure I had my nails done. But whenever we go on holiday anywhere, I always do neutral nails so that they match any of my outfits anyway. And I always redo my nails just before we go on holiday so that they last the amount, the like best amount of time. They are definitely like peeling and chipping and they do not look so great anymore. And half the gems have fallen off, which is actually another reason why I'm glad that he did it on the first day because the gems started falling off. But um, it's just three layers of a baby pink builder gel from Miley. And then I have this like gold um, powder stuff, which is from Miley in this pen that's got like a sponge on it. And so I painted like the little stars in a clear gel and then like went over it with the gold powder stuff. And it was really fiddly and complicated. And I wish that I hadn't done that, but it turned out pretty cute in the end. Um, but I did really mess up my right hand. So I'm glad that that was not the hand that was in the pictures. <laughs> if you want to see a better picture of what my nails look like on the actual day, then that is on my Instagram. Lots of people are also asking like, when we're going to get married? Do we have a wedding day? If we're going to get married straight away or if we're going to have a long engagement? If it was me and if the timing was right and all our family could make it and the weather was nice, I would get married tomorrow. <laughs> But obviously we're not getting married tomorrow. Weddings take a while to plan and I want all of my friends and family to be able to make it obviously. But it probably will be 2025 just because my brother and his fiance get married next year. And I feel like we can't just go in and, and be like, oh, we've just got engaged. Oh, we're getting married before you. Like I cannot do that and like swoop in there before they've got married and get married before them, if you get what I mean. So, <laughs> so mine and James's wedding will probably be 2025 um, and also we want like a warm-ish wedding or like a summer-ish wed spring or summer wedding maybe um, So maybe like spring summer 2025, but we'll see I mean we have no idea at the moment about venues and everything and I know that they get booked up really quickly So that could change you never know and in terms of what kind of wedding we want um, Some people are asking do you think you'll get married in Skiathos or do you think you'll get married abroad? We would love to get married in Skiathos However, the only thing is all the weddings that I've looked at on Skiathos one they're usually like small weddings. Most of them are kind of like 30, 40 people. Obviously we've not decided yet how many people are coming, but both me and James have got quite big families and we want like family and friends to be there and 40, 30, 40 people would not be enough people that we ideally would want at our wedding. I don't know, maybe our minds will change and we'll just like go away with our parents and siblings and best mates and get married. But you know, like we literally have no idea at the moment. And also as well, I know that I definitely want my grandparents to be there and I would love my nan to be there and my nan she has issues with her mobility and she wouldn't be able to get on a plane and go over somewhere to get married abroad because a lot of them aren't very kind of like disability friendly and that is absolutely something that I don't want to do exclude my nan from the wedding because she can't get somewhere like that is not gonna happen and I know that some people do two weddings when they go abroad like they'll have a, a smaller UK wedding or like a bigger UK wedding and then a, a smaller wedding abroad or vice versa or whatever, but I don't know, at the moment we're not entirely sure. But it won't be a traditional wedding. People are asking if we'll be getting married in a church. Neither me or James are religious, so we will not be getting married in a church. I quite like the idea of like a converted barn or just something that looks pretty and modern and has got like good amount of natural light so that we can get some nice pictures. And then on my lips, I think in those pictures I had the collection lip burner and cappuccino. Another question is, will I do my own wedding makeup? Yes. I'm 99% sure that yes, I will do my own makeup. I guess mostly because I'm quite picky with my makeup and sometimes when I've had it done by makeup artists I haven't been 100% happy with it which oh my god is absolutely nothing to do with the makeup artist it's mostly just because I like I'm quite fussy. I think because I can do my makeup decently well and like to a point where I'm happy with how it looks in pictures and stuff then I don't necessarily think I need a makeup artist. I probably will get someone to do my hair though because as you can see from the start of this video my I am not the best at doing my hair. I went on this website the other day called Bridebook I think it's called and I downloaded that app actually let me just check what is it called. Yeah it's called Bridebook and oh my god it's been so helpful so far I'm guessing there are other websites that are kind of similar. It seems like weddings are a lot to plan I'm not gonna lie and it's quite overwhelming. The final two questions are will you do wedding planning videos? Probably not if I am gonna do any kind of wedding planning content it will be on my second channel. Don't worry, I'm not going to be turning my channel into a wedding planning or bride channel. I'm still going to be doing my usual content. There might be a couple of wedding makeup kind of videos. Maybe even, I don't know, I might do some like 
trying affordable wedding dresses kind of videos. See if I am gonna do any wedding planning videos, which I'm not even sure if I will. They will probably be on my second channel, um, on my TikTok. And then the final question is, who is going to be your maid of honor? So I did actually post the other day on my story that I went out for dinner with my maid of honor and I completely forgot to even mention in that story that my maid of honor is Ellie, which I kind of felt like was an unspoken thing that I didn't even need to say. If you have kept up with me in my life, Ellie is my best friend. We've been best friends since we were 12 and she was always gonna be my maid of honor. So the other day we went out for dinner to celebrate and oh my God, it was just such a weird, surreal moment. We were both sort of sitting there like, what? Like, what is this? How has this happened? I think we both felt really old in that moment, even though we are only 26, but it was like a wow, shit. Like this is actually happening. But yeah, we went out for dinner. We went to the Ivy, which was, oh, oh the food is so good. It was very lovely. And she got me a little gift, which was like a wedding planning book and also the cutest little Christmas tree ornament, which has our engagement date on it. And it says Sophie and James like engaged and it's a little Christmas tree ornament that we can hang on the tree every year. And then eventually like our kids will see it. And oh, I just think that is the sweetest gift. So she got me that and then I got her actually a little necklace and I got one for myself as well. Um, I'm a gold jewelry wearer. Ellie is a silver jewelry wearer. So I got myself this little gold cowboy boot and I got Ellie the silver cowboy boot necklace. It was from a website called Lily Charmed. Oh, and the boot is because it's related to our Nashville trip. Me and Ali both went to Nashville back in May together. It was actually our first holiday together, like just the two of us. And it was one of the best memories of my life. And now whenever I see little cowboy boots, it reminds me of Nashville. And I got her this little card that said, bitch, you always knew, but let's act like this was a surprise, which is so true. Oh my God, I just realized that I missed out part of the story. I never finished the actual engagement day. Straight away, we FaceTimed my parents and we FaceTimed his parents. And then I messaged my nan and I messaged my family like in the group chat. And then like the sun was setting and we needed to go to dinner because it was getting later and later. And we were like, okay, right, let's just walk to dinner and we can like message people and let them know while we're on the way. Then I was like, James, I need to FaceTime Ellie. I can't not, I can't just message Ellie to tell her that we're engaged. But then I was like, really, I should have FaceTimed her like on the beach, but then we were so caught up in like FaceTiming our parents and like telling our family. And then James was like, oh, I'm gonna tell all my friends. And I was like, I need to tell Ellie. So we walked to a little local restaurant. That's one of our favorites near our hotel in Skiathos. And then immediately after we had ordered our food, I was like, okay, James, wait here. We've ordered our food. I need to run outside and FaceTime Ellie. By this point, it was like pitch black because the sun had gone down. I had messaged Ellie being like, hey, are you finished with work? Like, are you home from work? And then she said she knew in that moment, she was like, shit, it's gonna be now. And so then, yeah, I FaceTimed Ellie, but she was like, I wasn't expecting it to be the first night. And I was like, same. And then, yeah, we were outside and like, I think Ellie was crying. I think I was crying. Like we had this big emotional chat and we were just like, both like, oh my God. And I was like, oh my God. And telling her the story. And it was just so exciting and so lovely. Oh, we had the best dinner. It, we shared like a mixed grill platter with pita bread and chips. Oh my God, it was just unreal. And I had a cocktail because I thought I'm gonna celebrate. That was the strongest cocktail of my life. And I'm not kidding. I think I was really dehydrated anyway. Like I'd barely had any like water that day. I got about halfway through that cocktail and I was thinking like, woo. I was just like eating like everything. <laughs> oh, it was so good. It was so nice. And then we walked back up to the hotel and waiting for me was a porn star martini at the bar from our favorite barman who's called Agalos at the hotel that we stay at. And we love the family that run this hotel. And little did I know, earlier in the day, James had been down to the bar to get himself a drink. He told Nikos, who's the oldest brother that like runs the hotel that he was planning to propose. And he'd said to him for when we come back from dinner, please can you have Soph's favorite drink, which is a porn star martini ready for her. And he was like, yeah, yeah, of course we can do that. And he just said, message me when you're leaving the restaurant. And then we got back up there and they were like, congratulations. And they, I have my drink there waiting for me. And yeah, it was just really lovely. And then we just like sat at the bar for the rest of that evening and like had a few drinks. And yeah, it, oh, it was just such a lovely day, like such a perfect proposal. So I'm still looking at myself like I need more blush, but I don't know if that's just the lighting being like a bit washed out. I think it is the lighting because when I went outside to walk pinks, I looked very blushy, but let me just add a little bit more. Oh, the only thing that I've not done, take my powder foundation and just go over just to conceal them a little bit more. 
I used the Refi Tinted Brow Gel on that day, but where is it? I definitely use this. I've got the shade Medium Brown, I think, just to make my eyebrows extra fluffy. Oh, and before my mascara, I would have added the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I just refilled my little travel bottle of it and took this with me. Anyway, I think that is it from me. I think I've answered all of the questions. I'm not gonna lie, it's still so weird seeing myself with an engagement ring on my finger. Like, <laughs> I spent the whole holiday just looking down at my hand like, oh my God, it actually happened. And like, we spent the whole rest of the holiday being like, oh my God, we're engaged. And if you wanna see any of the other content, it's either on shorts or it's on my TikTok or it's on Instagram. I've posted like a few different things. Thank you again. Thank you so much for all of your nice comments and everyone just being so, so lovely. I am gonna go. I hope you guys are good and I will see you in my next video. Bye.